Hey, it's Kendrick with Technology Interpreters. Today we're going to be going, this is part three of the Sentinel One uh, Complete Guide. Basically, the course is teaching you everything that I know about Sentinel One. Today is a little different. I got two of the people from the Cybersecurity Mentorship Program. I've got Jabari and Pierre who are with me. So we're going to walk you through this live with them. So they're going to have an opportunity to ask questions and stuff like this. It's going to be a little more collaborative. So let me know if you like this style a video better so let's go ahead that being and by the way if you're interested in the mentorship program then let me know i have a link in the description of this video so this is what's called sentinel one ranger so you're looking at actual data so just so you know there are some fields that i've hidden like as far as my visible ip address i've actually hidden my public ip address so it'll show you my local addresses but these are like non-routable addresses and stuff like that but uh, you can go in and check the certain columns to uncheck what's called the MAC addresses. So I've hidden the MAC addresses and the visible IP address is going to be your public IP address because I don't necessarily want to give that away <laughs> on this video. So what is Ranger? OK, so I know Jabari and PR, you're asking the question uh, because I can enable Ranger and your tenants. And so Jabari and Pierre both do their training in these tenants here. Right. Cybersecurity mentee one and two. That's where they do. This is where I do my testing. And this is the first mentee, uh, uh, Daniel, who's also not here today. So anyway, that being the case, Ranger is a way of detecting other devices that are on your computer network. OK. So essentially what that means and say, so just like, you know, we're doing a lot of recording here. So uh, so what Ranger does is if somebody comes in, they plugs into your network. Um, all the other Sentinel one agents, they're going to read the network traffic and stuff like that, and they're going to determine if this is a new device, a rogue device and stuff like that, and they're gonna classify. So you can see right here from my menu, what we have is we have your different statuses. So we got unsupported, which means we can't put a Sentinel-1 agent on it. We got secured, which means these are 20% of my network has Sentinel-1 on it. We have unsecured, which is 88.5%. And then we have this group of unknown devices. So if we start to drill into these unknown devices, I think this is really interesting. I hope I enjoy this. Um, by the way, management console will be updated to a new version. Thank you. But what we're looking at is these are Linux devices. So if you think about these are, I got a lot of Philips Hue devices on my network. And I also got some Amazon Alexas, right? And then I've got some Google Wi-Fi. I got some Ring devices. All right, and these Wiz devices, they're essentially Linux. If you look at a trend here, so all these smart home and automation devices, they all tend to be Linux based, right? And that's what Sentinel is classifying them. And it's showing me that they're unsupported, you know, so I can't put Sentinel one on these devices. It's also giving me the manufacturer. It also gives me the Mac address. And there's a whole bunch of other information that it gives me for these. All right. So let's go back and let's look at the unsecured devices. So most likely these are going to be workstations. And so I can tell you that these are workstations on my test lab for my main company right there. So that's what those devices are. So I got two devices there. Three devices there and then these unknown let's take a quick peek at these all right so these are so i don't really get it doesn't so this is one of the things it doesn't give me much i'll have to track those down i can kind of look at my router and look at the ip addresses and stuff like that and figure out from looking at my router maybe even mac address to sign to figure out but it wasn't able to classify based on ip address mac address or, or any of the other values what type of device this was okay and so then we got these places and this is what i love about Sentinel one the filtering feature is nice so look we can go by allowed not reviewed under analysis and stuff like that device review we got different os we can filter down to we got the states we got the device types which we were seeing over here we got the discovery method so the most of the devices on my network looks like we discovered basically using a port scan or a ping but here are all the other methods that we have discovering it this is the site that is detecting for it. so it's just showing exactly where it detected these devices which is in my site which apparently I have Ranger enabled for my main site, uh, manufacturer OS version. And then one thing to note in Sentinel One is typically be mindful. Sometimes they'll have a bar, that, a little button that you can click here to show additional devices. Okay. So that being the case, any questions, Jabari, Pierre, anything before I kind of go on with this? No. So if you will, uh, uh, any other. Uh, devices connect to you, say your Wi-Fi, it automatically shows on Ranger. Yeah, it's, as long as the, as long as I have a device that has Ranger on that network subnet, typically I should be able to gather some kind of information. And so, what Sentinel One is my understanding of Sentinel One is doing. So, if it's using, you've already got this agent on your machine, and so okay. 
it's taking advantage of that by utilizing the agent on your machine already and using that for additional scanning. Okay, so let's filter. Let's go back to all the devices here. Now you can see what the makeup of my network is too. So I've got 80%. So I get a chance to review. So we can check out this a little bit. So reviewed, not reviewed, and allowed. Okay, so we got device review. So let's see what's not reviewed. All right, so you can see these. Now let's look here. We click on the device, and this is behind my uh, a webcam. So I'm going to turn this off just for a second. Okay, so we can check the box over here. And we can go to actions and we can apply a device review. Okay, so let's see what that means. All right, so, and this allows us to basically be able to classify. So, devices without an identified MAC address cannot be tagged. So, I can actually start going through these and I can actually start classifying all the devices in my house to further kind of help be able to identify what may or may not be um, safe on my network. So, if you go ahead and you classify everything that's known, then it'll be pretty easy to identify the unknown devices. Okay. So let's go ahead and uncheck here. Turn my webcam back on my face cam. All right, cool. And then also you can see my makeup is detected. I got one print on my network. That is true. Uh, the number of networks is detected one smart office, IOT devices, storage devices. That's pretty much correct. Audio visual devices. I'm curious to see what those are, but anyway, so this is what Ranger does. So let's dig into the settings uh, for Ranger also. So if I look at networks, once again, I've gone through and I've already <laughs> in preparation for the video, I've hidden my visible IP address and MAC addresses because I don't want to give that to you all. All right. So but as you can see right here, it's showing that basically manufacturing and I do use I use Google Wi-Fi, you know, and uh, it's got me listed right there. So that's my networks. And so it does network detection. So networks with agent one. Networks with scanning on is one and then new networks discovered. So no new networks discovered. And then here we go here. Kind of get into our Ranger settings so we can enable Ranger. Right. Pierre says, I don't have Ranger in my tenant. <laughs> well, we probably need to go in your settings and enable Ranger scanning. OK, scan only in Ranger scanner local hub subnet. Let me turn this off. Let's see if it'll actually like traverse other subnets and scan the rest of my network. I'm curious to see how it works. Auto neighbor scan of uh, discovery networks. Yeah, we want to do that. Combine devices with the same MAC address. So that means it's doing some kind of correlation between the devices. Scan snapshot interval five to 20 minutes. Okay, let's see. Let's hover over that. Change the interval between snapshots. Change apply in the next scan. Okay, so I don't know what I don't know what says snapshots. I don't know if it's like I know Sentinel one agents do actually take a snapshot of the machine like they think they keep up to three snapshots or something like that so if you ever get a machine that's infected you can actually roll the machine back to a previous version so that's why maybe perhaps it's talking about those snapshots minimum agents in a corporate network so we can say we want a minimum of three agents in a corporate network so ranger will not show or scan networks with fewer agents okay and then here we go and like this is really cool i like this we get to the active scan configuration so this shows all the different ways we can detect stuff so icmp which is ping snmp which is simple network management protocol uh, and multicast dns server message block dns tcp port scan and here's like this is showing you all the scans that it's using we can also use udp port scans and global restrictions do not scan these ips and networks so that's a good thing because sometimes Say, for instance, if we were in a PLC, a pro, uh, what is it, Project Logic Controller or something, PL, I forgot the first part of it. But uh, PLCs are like automation equipment. They can, a lot of times they're very sensitive and they control like, like big machines and factories and stuff like that where robots and different things do things that are really major that if they break, people can get hurt, things can get destroyed, lots of money can be spent. And so maybe you want to exclude scanning because a lot of times PLCs, uh, can actually be scanned and it will cause those PLCs to go down and stop functioning, which can be catastrophic. And so then you can do a time limit on networks to show uh, a new well, time limit for networks to show as new. All right. So we want, we want something to show as to be, I guess, limited for 72 hours before it shows it as a new network. Time limit for networks to show one to seven days. So we're choosing seven days. Time limits for networks to show. Not so sure about this. So let's hover over that. By the way, most things in Sentinel One can be hovered. So old networks that are off are removed. So this is actually cleaning up anything that is not detecting anymore. Okay. So let's go ahead. That goes to that menu. Uh, active scan configuration. 
All right, so that's that part. So we actually went through all three of those network settings and then deployment keys. So there are no credentials groups in this account. So if we click on this, we can create a credential group. Looks like associated domain. Okay, so I'm assuming that's credential groups store credentials to authenticate and deploy to target endpoints. So this allows us to be able to, to do, I guess some type of authentication. Let's see, to improve domain detection and deployment success, Turn our SMB on a target Windows machine, uh, Windows endpoints, and range of settings, default active scan configuration. Okay, cool. So I think, uh, let's make sure I went through. Honestly, I think that's it for Ranger. If you wanted to know why, I meant to mention in the video, beginning of the video, I didn't do visibility. I don't have that turned on in my tenant, but the visibility allows you to do some deep like querying to be able to identify different things like attributes of machines and stuff like that. So if you're looking for threats or if you're looking for additional information and maybe you're doing some threat hunting which is a lot of times proactive or you're doing incident response so visibility gives you a lot of power to use queries to interrogate all the information that's sent to the one all the telemetry that's sent to the one is actually pulling off these machines so before i close the video a lot said do a lot at y'all quick question but y'all gonna have to i can't be like uh uh, uh y'all gotta come rapid fire with these questions so any questions Debari, pierre yeah, I got a question. Um, okay. It's amazing how the agent is on your actual mm -hmm. um, host yep. machine. And then it's pulling all that information from all things connected to your network. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's, how, does it, how does it do that without the agent being on the other actual devices? Well, or so, is it just, I'm sorry. No, 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 go ahead and finish your question. I think that's a good question, by the way. Go ahead, finish. Oh, like, uh, like, how is it pulling all the things? Like, it's like, um, it's kind of like, like you ping in like a device. Like, how you like you use a DCH, uh, sorry, dynamic host uh, protocol to get the IP address. Mm -hmm. Like you, uh, like the Dora kind of thing. Discover, offer, um, a request and accept. So it's like okay. you're getting like um the thing. Is that what ask, it's doing? I was gonna ask you the same question. Right, I'm, that's I'm, amazing. I'm, did that, that agent discover every device in your network? <laughs> so I think y'all underestimate really what's going on behind the scenes of your network, right? And it's just so happens, it's funny, we got a network engineer here in addition <laughs> to myself. So former network engineer, Man. so I still got some skills though. But here's the thing, on your network, before a machine talks, that machine is gonna do, it's gonna do a broadcast. It's gonna give up some information. Every time you plug in a device to your network, it's got to be able to talk to other devices and gateways and stuff like that to be able to mm. figure out how to get the thing. And so all this stuff is coming through. And so you got this computer that's plugged in and it's just like it's just interrogating that traffic and looking at the packets and stuff like that. For instance, everything I mean, everything that's talking on layer two is giving away its MAC address, right? You're exchanging MAC address. And all I got to do is I can know from your MAC address alone <laughs> um, what type of device or who your manufacturer is. So that's an easy one right there. So we got your manufacturer, we got your IP address because like say it's going to be talking to other machines and stuff like that. It's got to find the gateways and stuff like that. And so all these different values that we discussed here, like we were kind of talking about all the different ways of doing discovery, right? It's using all these different metrics. So SNMP, Simple Network Management Protocol. Well, the thing is like most uh, switches and routers and stuff like that, a lot of times they don't even change the default credentials like, like you can probably go in a lot of networks and they literally have not changed the default snmp credentials so in a nutshell snmp is a protocol that runs on a lot of network equipment and if you query that device correctly using snmp it will it literally has like pages and pages of information called mibs that you can interrogate to find all kind of things out about this equipment so if you got that and it's available and sent to the one that's smart enough to know based on the type of device that you are and MAC address and manufacturer, they can then use that information to identify and fingerprint you. SMB, you got server shares. Well, guess what? You can use SMB to be able to kind of like interrogate network shares to figure out exactly what's on their shares. You can see the admin share. You can see uh, there's several other shares that are typically for, at least four shares that are available on just about all machines. Right. So you can do that DNS traffic like, hey, it's, you know, DNS support 53. Right. And so mm -hmm. it's in DNS traffic, seeing where you're going, who you're talking to. <laughs> so and then multicast DNS, right, which is going to I don't, I don't know as much about multicast. Maybe Sam can talk a little bit more multicast DNS. But basically, it's just literally watching stuff, communication between your computer and other computers and things that are coming across the wire. 
and is able to get this much information from doing so. So Sam, I'll turn it over to you. You the expert guess, here. Yeah, what do you say, I Sam? They, I guess when they're requesting a P, uh, IP address, that's why they get the information. Well, mm. I mean, I literally just, you just narrowed it down to one thing. I just gave you 85 <laughs> things and you just went back. So it's just this one thing. Huh? <laughs> no, it's all the things I just mentioned and more. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Good. You know, it's the, the, the really simple uh, explanation for this is every single mm -hmm. item that you connect to your network is constantly bro broadcasting information out to the rest of the network saying, hey, I'm here. This is who I am. You know, if, if it's the first time it's connecting, it, it sends out that first packet going, hey, I need an IP address. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So all your devices are constantly talking. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're actively using it or not. It's, it's constantly broadcasting that information. So... You know, in the case of an endpoint that has Sentinel One installed on it, and it has that ranger that's listening, it's just listening to the the network interface on that device, and capturing and interpreting all of that uh, data that's flowing across the network, uh, mm -hmm. and using that to populate all of these these fields. Okay. Yeah. That's not, that's so, so okay. think, so think okay. about that. So that means that if somebody's malicious and they get on your network, your local subnet. And they know what's doing. Guess what? They can find a lot of information out about you, right? And so that's why a lot of companies, you know, they they have the scenario where they're they have the big the big outer castle wall, which means you have your per perimeter firewall, but your inside networks, unless they're VLAN and or which VLANs are basically logical separations of your local network, unless you're doing some kind of VLAN and firewall and stuff like that, a lot of times they're they're wide open for attacks from inside the network. So unless y'all have any more questions, uh, any questions before I end the video, we're at 16 minutes. Anybody? No, that makes sense. That, that, was, that was a great explanation. Was, it's just amazing how this uh, product works. Uh, Since the one, the Ooh. Ranger. Very hey, cool. Dude, hey, we just got, and we haven't even got, so we literally haven't even got to the Sentinels tab, which is where we actually deploy the agents and all that stuff, you know? So, but Ranger, I, by far, I think Ranger is one of the coolest parts of the product. I'll let y'all see it one more time before we do it. So I love Ranger. Pretty cool, pretty interesting. And so uh, once again, we're reminded, if you need mentorship, you can see I'm so, so fortunate to have Sam, who's my customer, who's also a network engineer and a very good one uh, to come through and drop in and help out with the mentorship program. And then Jabbar and Pierre, who have also, man, came from like literally being very, very, I mean, just basically searching desperately for anything that can get their hands on cybersecurity wise. To come into the program, giving them some focus, giving them some tasks. And now these guys have gone through vulnerability scanning, endpoint detection. They're doing, they're working in Sentinel One all the time. They've done Okta SSO integrations at this point. They're typing up instruction guys that I'm going to be posting on LinkedIn. So if you need a cybersecurity mentorship, it ain't free, but it's effective. So anyway, this is Kendrick. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. And please don't forget to like and subscribe.